All right, guys, it's now time to dive into, in my opinion, the most important asset when it comes to being comfortable out on the mountain, and that is the layering system. Dustin, we talk about this all of the time. On the outerwear side of things, we have a ton of adjustability and options, but it all really comes down to the core, and that's the base layering system. Yep, base layers and mid layers as well. Yep. Um, we go into some pretty, we can go into some pretty risky situations where it's like, you know, you're 40 miles from the truck, 50 miles from the truck. And if you're not prepared, it can be a really, really bad day. Right. And we talk about no bad days. So the pre being prepared with that layering system is the key. Um, and another comment I get is, well, you guys have so many options. Like it's, it's a little overwhelming. I, I don't know what to use. And so I think we can just go through some of those options right now and talk about how each one of them might be beneficial to different users, because none of us are, are built the same. None of us have the same needs for insulation or layering, you know, if, if we sweat a lot or we don't. And yeah. so we, there's options that'll work good for each individual person. Well, and I think as we start to break this down is you, there's not one perfect system mm -mm. for the whole season. I mean, you look at our use demands in December and January versus March and April, and it's completely different. And so I think that's where, uh, when you talk about the outerwear and the shell side of things, that's, we have some versatility built in there, but where the real versatility is, is in the layering system here. Yeah, and it's a system. There's a recipe here, right? And so the system needs to work together. You don't wanna wear cotton. Like that's the yeah. first no-no, right? If we're gonna get our Gore-Tex to work properly in the system to get the sweat away from our body, we need to let that recipe work. And so- And, and let me stop you there. That is when my, my first year riding climb, that was the thing that blew me away was I thought I was dry in the gear I was riding until I rode in climb stuff. And that is what Gore-Tex does. Gore-Tex doesn't let water in, but it lets water and or sweat escape. And the only way that can work is when you have the right materials that are close to skin. Yes. And that's again like, and everyone who's watching this video can can relate to this is that you're having a beautiful pow day except it turns into a stuck fest and you are literally boiling and Drenched. sweating yep. all over the place and then you got a 20 mile ride back cold. home right that's, yep. that's going to be cold and it's going to be dark and you know that is where i have found that this th this is where the magic of the climb lineup really is it's a science yeah. i mean there's a, a there's science. a science that's, that's to a good it way i mean to there's put the, it. the materials that we use um you know cer certain materials wick moisture away from the skin really good well if you've got moisture on your skin you're going to get cold easier so we got to get that away from the skin so the base layers are built that way for a reason the mid layers they need to be breathable they need to pass that moisture through to get it to the gore-tex get it away from the body so if you use the wrong mid layer it's not going to be breathable it's going to hoid the moisture in it, and so it all has to work together and, and another thing too is it's kind of specific to the power sports industry. A lot of us feel like, oh, well, I've got some layering and some fleece and yada, yada, or mm -hmm. whatever. And that's cool, but we're using heavier outerwear garments with zippers and things like that that can maybe wear on those pieces more than what an outerwear, you know, a, 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 an outdoor brand sure. would allow them to hold up. So we've got a specific power sports layering pieces that are meant to work with Gore-Tex. They're meant to hold up and be durable to our heavier outer garments that we're using, padding, whatever that might be. So I think before we kind of break down each piece, what I want to uh, give to you guys is, you know, what I run essentially 90% of the season. And so again, in the layering system, Climb has essentially a negative 1.0, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and then that brings us up to our mid layers. Sure. So 90% of the time, on the bottom, I am a 1.0 guy because I, I wear the, the 1.0 and then I have my knee braces. So I've got you know quite a bit of layering and, and insulation down there with that. Where, where it varies a little bit for me is on the top. So I run, again, the majority of the season, I run a 1.0. And then my mid layer is uh, the tactical jersey. And I wear the tactical jersey, well, because you guys see where I ride, I got, I'm got i brushing through trees, having the sled roll on top of me all the time. And so, you know, I like having not only protection, but the ability for that moisture to escape, go through the Gore-Tex. And um, I go through these cycles so many times of the day of where I'm sweaty, 
I'm dry. I'm sweaty. I'm dry. And, and so again, that's my go-to is, is I wear the 1.0. This is my mid layer and then the shell for my outside. Yeah. And for me, I, I'm a little bit different than that. We, we're kind of at two ends of the spectrum, but that's kind of cool because there's a little bit perspective there, but um, I will have sometimes multiple layers to dress for whatever I feel like I'm going to need for the day. I, I, I ride with some pretty diverse groups. If I'm with a trail crowd or I'm with an experienced mountain crowd or, you know, athletes or wherever I might be. Um, so I have to have, I would say a little bit more of an inventory to adjust for whatever those conditions are. And so I really like some of these mid layers to do that. We've got the override, the override alloy, the alloy, and each one of these pieces has ventilated areas, but then insulated areas. So if you get sweat in the pits, you get hot in the pits, but you need a little bit more insulation in the front. Well, we've got a piece for that, right? or in the back, or maybe you're old school and you want fleece. You like that old kind of comfy blanket feel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then we've got the fleece that works really for that. Or maybe you have a tendency to run warm, but then you're also cold. Well, we have the negative 1.0, which I know you like to wear I love, in the I, summer. I love the negative 1.0. It's something that I use in the summer on dirt bikes, like exclusively, but also in the springtime, I will use the negative 1.0 because I still want my mid layer, but it's too hot, right? Right. So having that negative 1.0 really helps kind of regulate the heat there. And it, it, that's a, again, there's science to that. The negative 1.0 will, if it has air exposure to it, it actually mm -hmm. cools, cools you. you. It's a cooling yeah. fabric, mm -hmm. but then if you shut all your vents, it acts like a warming layer. So it's a really versatile piece. Um, if you don't need that, we have a 1.0 base layer. If you want something a little thicker than that, we have a 2.0 base layer. Or if you're in a really extreme condition and you're sitting down in trail speeds, we have a 3.0 heavier. So there's lots of different options to get you the warmth that you want, the dexterity or the, the mobility that you want, and the comfort level that you want. Yeah, and Dustin covered this is, you know, there are a ton of options and it can be a little overwhelming when you're on the site, uh, it, when you're looking at both base layer and mid layer. But in all reality, really all of the systems work in conjunction. And what we find ourselves doing a lot is we wear from a casual standpoint, we end up wearing these mid layers a bunch because they're doing all those same things. Yeah. They're keeping us warm, but like, so for example, you know, when I'm out loading the trailer and running around, I got to run back and get sleds sure. and doing all this stuff. You know, this, uh, a layer like this is really nice. It keeps the, keeps the warmth in, mm -hmm. um, but yet still um, very light and easy and packable and use packable. it as your emergency piece on the back of the sled yeah that's actually uh that piece is called the maverick maverick thank you <laughs> uh the the maverick is um is the exact coat that i carry as my emergency uh, layer system i i pack it down and it goes in my avi bag so yep. so guys um again to to recap you know this is one of the key categories that you cannot overlook this is what will make your day more enjoyable um and and what's nice about it is there's a ton of options and mm -hmm. so you have your staple piece of your outerwear but more importantly you need the wick away ability and to have the warmth and the comfort with the base layer and and to add to that if this is one of those pieces it takes a little bit of time to do your homework yeah. but don't be afraid to call climb and ask questions i mean there's lots of resources we can run things down from you. Chris's staff can run, you know, there's yep. people that can help you understand what's best for you. So don't be afraid to take some time and ask the questions because it'll be worth it to get the right piece for you. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. And, you know, it's something, the whole reason that we're doing these videos and these series is to get you guys a little bit more product knowledge to help make the right decision. But in the end, there's still a ton of choices. So use those resources, use us, use Climb. We've written it in it all and we know what works best for us. And that's the cool thing is, again, with our customers, base both ours and yours you know we see it all yeah. and we can help steer you in the right direction